Important changes happening to the most popular mode within Halo Infinite. A recent leak shows that Griff Ball is returning to Halo Infinite, and we finally have our release day of Season 2 for the Halo TV show. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. If you like these informative videos, make sure to tap like for algorithm reasons. And apparently 81% of you people watching this channel are not subscribed, so you know what to do then. In a surprise reveal yesterday, it looks like the Halo TV show Season 2 will be launching in February, but just in case you missed Season 1, for whatever reason. Trust me, there's many reasons. Season one is now gonna be streaming live on YouTube right now. If you go to the Paramount Plus YouTube channel, you'll, under playlists, you'll see the Halo season one, and well, it's all there, the entire thing. I'm a little apprehensive with this new season coming in because season one, well, I do feel like it had some great parts in it. It had some really questionable parts in it as well. I feel like the creators of the show tried to make Halo more into a TV show you would see like on maybe CW or just kind of some average show you see on TV. Rather than being true to the original source material, I understand like things need to change. That happens all the time with live show adaptations. I mean, it happened with Game of Thrones, right? Where they took out characters and combined characters because with live action, there are limitations. I thought some characters were rather well done. Like I thought Halsey was great. I thought every scene that she was in, she stole the show. I thought Cortana felt like Cortana, definitely sounded like her. But I think the show really focused on who is Master Chief, right? Like giving him a personality and having him do things I wouldn't expect a Master Chief to do, in which I don't really agree with that kind of approach to that character. He's like the Terminator, right? He's like one-liner dude, not very many emotions, kind of basically a robot. But what made a movie like Terminator 2 so great is because well, they tried to humanize him a little bit. He tried to understand what makes people human. With Master Chief in the TV show, it felt like a kid trying to go through a story of trying to understand that he's actually adopted. And where season one left off, again, no spoilers. If you haven't seen it, go check it out on the YouTube channel. I am very curious to see what they do with Master Chief and Cortana and the crew after the end of season one. But it looks like we won't have to wait long as season two launches on February 8th. As we get closer to that date, I'm sure we'll get some more trailers, some more information, and I'll definitely share with you guys here on the channel. Next, we're seeing some key changes happening to Halo Infinite's most popular mode. That is the ranked experience with December update coming in. We have some changes coming in when it comes to ranked demotion protection and also ranked quit penalties. So first let's go over ranked demotion protection. This gives you a three game buffer for when you get into a new level of rank, say you go from gold to platinum, you then have three games in that platinum level that you won't go back down to gold. So for example, say you just got into a higher rank, you just got into platinum, diamond, onyx, whatever level. Whatever happens in those next three games, you'll maintain that new rank. So if you lose a game, disconnect, or even quit, you'll still maintain that new level. Winning a game does count for those first three, so it's only three games right there that get to maintain your new rank. This is really nice to see as oftentimes when you do rank up in Halo Infinite, from my personal experience, because ranked is my favorite mode to play in the game, that when you do rank up rather high or get a couple win streaks, you get thrown into a harder match generally, and you get knocked back down, which can be very frustrating, especially when that new level is your goal. Because the way the ranking and skill-based matchmaking works that it plays you against players at your equal skill level and if you overperform you get bumped into a higher bracket but oftentimes when you get put in that higher bracket the gameplay is very different so it does take some time to learn how to play at higher levels of halo so i'm glad to see that there is this little buffer right there just kind of have it so then you don't just lose exactly what you just earned next let's talk about ranked quit penalty adjustments these adjustments are made to alleviate the pain of when someone either crashes or quits out of your game but fire teams do play a factor of how much CSR you lose. If someone in your game but not on your fire team quits, they will receive the max penalty, but you will not lose any CSR. If someone on your fire team quits and then you quit, do you receive a penalty? Yes, you will lose up to five CSR just like today. That's a very important distinction to make because oftentimes fire teams will leave together and say if you're a solo queue player matched with a party of three and they all leave and you leave, you get negative five CSR. That's not fair. So that's why they changed it. Interestingly enough though, saying if someone on the other team quits, can you quit with no penalty? Yes. I don't know why you would, but you can. I appreciate that as well, because essentially if someone leaves a 4v4 match, your team is at such a significant disadvantage that it, the whole game's chalked basically after that. So I'm glad to see if someone quits out your team, you can then leave without any worry. But if you're on the wrong side of the team who's quitting, do you get any loss of CSR? Well, they actually address that saying, if someone not on my fire team quits, but we stay and lose the game, how much CSR will I lose? 
you'll lose zero CSR. What happens if a teammate quits slash crashes while loading in? The first quit after the match starts will receive the full penalty, but after that, all players will be able to leave without any penalty. Sadly enough, 343 is not able to distinguish people who quit and people who crash. Now, from my experience, I don't really have crashing too often. It might happen like once every like 100 games or something like that. Like, yeah, it sucks. You lose your CSR, but hey, it's understandable because sometimes people will just alt F4 out of a game as well. It could open up a system where people could abuse quitting the game or quitting the build rather than quitting the game. And then you don't have to lose CSR, but you quit the match effectively. Same kind of thing. And the rest of your team leaves. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a very toxic situation. I hope 343 finds some way for people to not penalize people who crash out of the game. But I've heard that basically, from what I've heard from Tashi and other people within the community, that if you have crash forgiveness, we can't really track it like they can leave. It opens the door for bad behavior in the game. Also, if you quit too many games, you get banned. And they actually addressed this saying, if someone in my game quits and then I decide to quit for no penalty, will I still get hit with the ban hammer? No, quitting in these instances is safe from the ban hammer. We also have ranked extraction updates, and these changes will only take place in ranked, not in the social experience of extraction. For the audio changes, they say at the moment you can hear that your extraction point is being converted by the enemy team from anywhere on the map. This meant players were able to leave the area around the extraction device and use the global audio queue to tell them when to peek back out. With this upcoming audio change, the device itself will emit the audio, meaning you'll have to be in close vicinity to hear it being converted. The UI changes coming in, you can see in your UI when the extraction point is being converted. Similar to above, this allowed players to leave the area near the extraction device and only peek out when the UI showed it was being converted. With our upcoming change, this will go away almost entirely. The UI will no longer indicate to you when the extraction point is actively being converted and it will also no longer indicate to you how much time is remaining. Commenting on it saying it's going to play a bit old school and hardcore as players slash coaches will be needing to time the extractions like timing weapons and power-ups in older Halo titles. I don't know about these changes. I mean, I play ranked and I do enjoy it, but I do think that being able to leave the area of extraction is what helps differentiate it from King of the Hill. Though I do feel this will help out the attacking team who are trying to disarm the extraction and convert it to their own side of things. Though for the UI changes, not really knowing when the hill is going to move or when the extraction point is going to move, I don't know if that's going to work out really well when it comes to the matchmaking side of things. I think that's perfect for the competitive teams side of the stuff. We'll just have to wait and see how it plays out. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do like a gameplay video showcasing extraction. Now the fan favorite mode Griffball looks to be added into Halo Infinite. Possibly. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Our favorite leaky boy, Sarasia, went on Twitter to post this. This is from the API with various commands within the code saying on Griffball 30 seconds, Griffball assassination, Griffball rejection. Obviously, this doesn't confirm that Griffball will be coming into Halo Infinite, though it's very interesting to see that the code has been updated with Griffball in mind. With the recent changes to the gravity hammer to add more physics and have it be more lethal, we could possibly see Griffball finally return to Halo Infinite, which would be amazing. Obviously, the hammer within Halo Infinite is not nearly at the level of it was back in Halo 3, 4, or even Reach. Hammer physics are extremely important when it comes to the Griffball game mode, but this is a fan favorite. People love their Griffball. It's in the constant rotation on the Master Chief collection. So for all your Griffball fans, I'm excited for you. Hopefully we'll know more about it again. If we know more official information or see any more leaks about Griffball coming into Halo Infinite, you know I'll share it with you guys here on the channel. As a fun little side note, guys, I actually started up a brand new channel and it's a Call of Duty based channel. I've been having a lot of fun with Modern Warfare 3, so I decided to make some content over there. If you guys want to see some more gameplay related fun content, check out this video right here. And thank you all for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.